two weeks ago we launched an application on the iPhone device and the BlackBerry device. The reason we moved um, on from just providing WAP based services is there's so much more interactivity and great user experiences that can be generated using these application platforms. So we decided to take the next step forward and build in additional functionality. Things like offline caching so that people can browse our content when they're in elevators or in subways. Things like a better um, pictures experience that allows people to browse the news using mosaic of pictures from the day. Uh, increased use of video, data, portfolios and watch lists and that kind of functionality which you just simply can't do very well um, without using the applications. I think the applications in general are changing the game in terms of the volume of content people can consume. We found that with some of these applications, the um, piece, the individual items of content that people are consuming are up 10 or even 100 fold on what they are through a WAP browsing experience. So it changes both the um, ability to quickly navigate and to quickly consume large amounts of content, as well as the way that you might organize or save or share that content as well. You know, here we, we saw just a presentation from Nokia. What is the, um, what do you think of the device? What do you think of um, the opportunities uh, of, of, or what are you doing with Nokia and, and the new operating system? We've had a very long-standing relationship with Nokia. We work very closely with them, particularly in Europe. Um, we've participated in a number of their R&D projects, particularly in recent times what has been dubbed the Mojo experiment, mobile journalism, where we worked closely with Nokia to help them refine the um, video capture, uploading, editing software that's inbuilt into their forthcoming devices. And it's been a fabulous learning experience for both organisations. We've been able to share with them some of the workflow issues that make the technology that much more usable and they've been able to share with us some of the directions in terms of the technical capabilities that we've been able to develop for. So we have our uh, video automatically preloaded into the OV store and a number of shortcuts to Thomson Reuters content and in particular Reuters.com content preloaded into the OV store and it's a different model. Um, you know OV, the OV store allows not only full applications but uh, RSS content to be accessible and that's a big difference. So it's really important to us to be working with a broad range of partners, Nokia, RIM, Apple, um, Google, to really understand the strengths and the opportunities of all of these different platforms so we can ensure that we stay ahead of what consumer demand is. Very good. Uh, what do you think about the new device? What were your impressions that you saw on stage? I think it's fabulous. I think it's certainly feature packed. Uh, there is certainly um, you know, a lot of capabilities built in there and what I really admire about Nokia is their ability to transcend the, the um, literal capabilities of the technology and really think about what the user experience is. And there are other, other technology companies who are also very good at that but I think um, Nokia, particularly in the US marketplace, hasn't necessarily had a profile that matches their, uh, their expertise and um, I'm looking forward to seeing them penetrate this marketplace more, more strongly. The uh, Reuters.com family of products, which is 17 websites globally, mobile um, applications and mobile browsing experiences offline, and then also digital out of home, uh, is really designed to provide information and news to business professionals. So it fits very neatly in the family of uh, customer segments that Thomson Reuters serves, which is business professionals at large. Uh, and our goal is to really provide a broader proposition to business professionals and then allow them to dig into deep uh, niche verticals of high value content uh, that Thomson Reuters is particularly well placed to provide. Them, everything from financial services and financial information for people who are involved in the, in the financial services sector through to legal and um, tax and accounting information. So a small example of that is we recently, last week, launched a small business vertical on Reuters.com. So this is a place where small business owners and operators and entrepreneurs can come, find news and information that's relevant to helping them run their business more effectively. And in addition to that, we've provided a series of reference information from our colleagues in Find Law in the legal division that helps people think through some of the legal issues and um, some of the uh, business startup issues that face entrepreneurs around how to hire staff, how to write contracts, how to lease space, how to prepare a business plan, how to deal with your tax accountant or your bank manager. So through Reuters.com we're actually able to provide a retail face to the depth and breadth of Reuters content that's 
primarily designed for B2B marketplace. So it's a gateway to subscription to, to the paid business? Yeah, it's a gateway and it's also a, a tremendous marketing vehicle for the rest of the firm uh, as we're able to introduce people to the quality content that Thomson Reuters specializes in.